So you want to make money on YouTube, but you don't want to make any videos. So a couple of people, myself included, went to the website for this advertisement and saw that it was run by a guy named Matt. He teaches you how to be successful on YouTube, except his way of doing it is stealing content. Meet Make Money Matt. My name is Matt Parr, a self-proclaimed YouTube expert who teaches people how to grow and make money on YouTube. I run nine different YouTube channels. I run nine different YouTube channels. I run nine different YouTube channels. You've probably seen him all over YouTube advertising his YouTube mastery course. The entire webinar, he kept talking about these successful channels he had built and again, how he did this and how you were able to do this. I've gotten over a million subscribers on YouTube. I've gotten channels up to over a million subscribers I've never even shown my face on these YouTube channels. But he never identifies the other eight channels that he has. Despite Matt saying he has these nine different successful YouTube channels, he has never once linked one. I've been able to generate a lot of money using this method. Here's another channel that I have. I made $16,412, $19,142. He showed receipts of all of the money he's been able to make on YouTube. He showed a Google AdSense that showed over over $100,000 in ad revenue on it. He blocked out all of the other information aside from the dollar amount. Well, I'm here today to tell you that this guy is an absolute fraud. fraud. Hey, how's it going Savannah and everybody watching this video? Before we get into today's video, I just want to tell you about today's sponsor, NordVPN. Guys, you are not getting the most out of your internet experience if you're not using a VPN. Not to mention, Nord will keep you safe through all of your internet browsing habits using its advanced features for a better online experience. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a tool that will encrypt your internet access, hide your IP address, and virtual location. Using a VPN means that even your internet service provider won't be able to see your activity. Your internet privacy is a basic human right, and with Nord's no data logging policy, you can be sure that you're being kept safe and secure. But what I've found to be the most useful part of a VPN is being able to access media that's not available in my country. My husband and I have been using a VPN for years. He particularly likes to be able to access news articles that are blocked in the US. They took my beloved friends off of Netflix this past January, and I've had an empty hole in my heart ever since. But with NordVPN, all I have to do is scroll through the list of 62 different countries, click on United Kingdom, and just like that, I'm able to access the UK's Netflix library where friends can pivot its way back into my heart. If you've never had a VPN, now is as good of a time as ever. Nord is offering my subscribers 68% off. That comes out to only $3.71 per month, plus they'll give you an extra month for free if you go to nordvpn.com slash savannahmarie and use the promo code code Savannah Marie. And hey, if you decide a VPN isn't for you, Nord has a 30 day money back guarantee. You'll be able to find all of this in the description and a pinned comment below. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and thanks to you for supporting this sponsor. It helps me out when you do so they'll want to continue a collaboration with me in the future. Now let's get into it. I first found Matt Parr a few weeks ago when I was doing a video where I was observing supposed entrepreneurs on Instagram. 18 year old makes $30,000 a month from YouTube. Look at him showing off these fucking play buttons. What do you even do, sir? That would be an interesting deep dive too. Maybe I should look more into this Matt Parr guy. And this sparked an interest in me. At anyone's first glance, this kid 100% looks like a scammer. Advertising his $1,000 course in YouTube mastery on his website. Things only get more questionable from there. In this video, I'm going to be presenting both sides. I want to talk about the speculations and the concerns of other people, but I also wanted to give Matt a platform to be able to speak to those concerns and speculations. Now originally, this was not what this video was going to be, uh, and I'll get into the storyline of creating this video. Yeah, it definitely took a turn and I've been really excited about it ever since it did. So yeah, we're presenting both sides. I'll let you know what I think at the end. Matt Parr, a self-proclaimed YouTube expert who runs nine different YouTube channels and has 
the coveted gold play button, which he says he's more proud of than his high school diploma, gives advice on how to make money on YouTube. Out of all nine channels that he claims to run, only one of them can be linked to him definitively, and that is Make Money Matt. He's got about a hundred videos on that channel, teaching things like how to earn a hundred to six hundred dollars per day on YouTube, how to make money on YouTube without making any videos, how to get quick subscribers, and boasting that he's had videos that have made upwards of $33,000. It's fishy. Let's not kid ourselves. So first and foremost, like I do every time I try to do a deep dive, I just did a quick, simple Google search to see what I could pull up. My main thing was like, I want to know what channels Matt Parr has had associated with him. I tried a few different search terms. Simply searching his name only brought up everything he puts out surface level. And based on an interview I found on YouTube from a year ago, he says he had just freshly turned 19. So I'm thinking he's probably around 20 by now. But many publications that I can find, including like all of the Instagram advertisements that I found him through, still say that like, oh, he's 18 years old. So take it with a grain of salt. He's probably 20 by now. But yeah, I mean the same stuff. That's all I could pull up was oh, he's 18. He runs nine different YouTube channels. He has the gold play button. He's making bank, etc. When I started researching, my first thought when I started coming across all this was if you are so successful on YouTube that you're charging $1,000 dollars to teach others to do the same, where is the proof? There's absolutely no credibility to back up all the things that he's claiming. I'm like, Jake Paul's scammy YouTube marketing courses cost what? Like $7 to get in and then $50 after that to actually see the content, which everyone was calling a scam back then. And that's Jake Paul, right? <laughs> You know, the prices were not comparable at all. So like, what YouTube channels do you run, Matt? He lists none of the other eight on his website at all. So the Make Money Matt channel has a bit over 100,000. I think as I'm filming this, he has maybe like 120,000 subscribers. So that's obviously not the channel that earned him the gold play button. Which channel is he running that has over a million subscribers? Now to me, I'm thinking, why would you wanna hide that? You know, I, I would be so proud of that. Anyone would be proud of that. You would think that he would be showing it off everywhere to establish credibility. Now on YouTube, each channel has a channel section and that's usually where like a YouTuber would link if they have second channels and stuff like that. So of course, like this is where I go to check to find what channels he's running and I oop, there's nothing there either. Anyway, he's been on my radar lately, uh, presumably because he's clearly advertising himself and his courses all over the internet and all over social media. As of me scripting all of this, he had gained 6,000 subs in two weeks, which is pretty impressive for any channel. And that means to me that his advertising is working on enough people. And these people are seeing value in what he's saying and they're listening to him. And I'm sitting here thinking like, oh my God, that's concerning. Although that gold play button is pretty eye catching. Let's talk about the gold play button for a second. Now, I think most of us know this by now, but basically you get the gold play button when you hit a million subscribers, which is an impressive feat for anyone. Now there's been a lot of speculation regarding the legitimacy of this gold play button. And this is mostly because what his critics say anyway, is that if you look closely at the gold play button, you can see that the channel name just says Matt. And if you go on YouTube and you search Matt, there's not a single YouTube channel that just has the name Matt on there that has over a million subscribers. So like if you were to look at PewDiePie's play buttons, they all say PewDiePie, not Felix, you know? So this leads a lot of people to believe that it's not real. My response to this is that the YouTube help page about creator awards itself blatantly says that you can specify the way you want your channel name to appear on the award. So all this speculation that people are making, I don't believe that that's enough to mean that it's fake. Also, I believe that Swell Entertainment, which I've included in this video as well, I think she has a video where she was claiming her silver play button, but we'll get into it a little more. You know, given all this, I felt like I needed to dig a little further. So I was on his website and I'm just like sitting there scrolling and I noticed that like a chat bot kept popping up in the corner and it was like, can I answer any questions for you? And I was like, mm, yeah, I have some questions. So here is that conversation. Welcome to Matt Parr. YouTubing is everyone's new dream job. You can do it too. Let me help you. Simply reply to this chat. Hey, I hope I'm not a bother. 
I just noticed you were still browsing. Got any questions? I'm happy to help. What YouTube channel does Matt run that has over 1 million subscribers? Hi there. Thanks for dropping in. Sorry, we don't have that information here. Though if you provide your name and email, I'll have the right member of the team get back to you via email ASAP. You can't just tell me the name of his most popular YouTube channel? LOL, okay. Can you provide an email address to me so that I can personally reach out to them myself? Matt doesn't give out all of his channels so there aren't thousands of carbon copies. You can see his personal brand channel however here. What does that mean? He doesn't want people to copy him? It would be best that Matt will be the one who'll explain this. May I know your name and email? Please. No, because I don't want you spamming my email trying to get me to sign up for his scam. I'd be happy to reach out on my own if you would just provide me the email address to a member of your team, since I'm assuming you won't give me an email address for Matt personally. You can email us at... So it took me a couple tries of asking them to be like, hey, can I have an email address since you won't answer my questions to finally get it. So of course I took the next logical step and sent an email and here is how that conversation went. I'm a YouTuber who has come across Matt website and YouTube channel. I'm just curious to know what channel Matt runs that has over 1 million subscribers. It seems like that would be something that would be a point of pride for anyone to have, so why doesn't Matt link it anywhere? Full disclosure, I'm currently putting a video together examining Matt and his business, so any statement you have to make will be included in said video. If no response is received, I will make it a point to include that detail. I'd just like to have a statement to go off of from your team directly so I can form my final opinion. Thanks. I got a response from Stormy within about 20 minutes, which is pretty quick and impressive. Here's what it said. Hey Savannah, Matt has made a video about his buttons already. You can check it out at this link. Have a good day. Best. Stormy. Well, um, my original email never actually said anything about his play buttons. This must be a point of contention, huh? <laughs> no matter! I checked out the video that she linked and Matt had some explanations for many of the questions that were being asked of him. But still not the name of his 1 million subscriber YouTube channel. Which is literally all I was asking about. So at this point, the chat on his website said that he doesn't release his other channel names because of carbon copies. But I was confused. We'll get into this in a bit, but in one video he posted, he literally says to take videos that other people have made and to essentially upload them for yourself. This gets specified later, so please don't form your final opinion right now. That's like the impression that I was under at this point. And I think that's clearly the impression that Amanda from Swell Entertainment was under when she made her video. Anyway, he also boasts that he has a list of over 100 other profitable niches that one can get into on YouTube. Surely there are copies of those niches all over YouTube, right? And if he truly had a channel that was over 1 million subscribers, there's almost certainly a lot of people who know about it who are trying to copy it already. I mean, for all we know, he could have copied someone else in order to be like, this is the niche I want to be in. Because that's kind of what most YouTubers kind of do, right? I mean, if you're the first person to start a niche, then freaking good for you. But with the amount of people who are on YouTube now making content, like, it's kind of hard to be original. But anyway, isn't this all kind of the point of taking his course? Like, don't you pay him to be able to show you what he's doing so that you can replicate the results. To say the least, it's a little sketchy. The rest of the email conversation goes like this. And notice that I had to ask why three separate times to get an actual semi answer. I'm not asking about his play buttons. I'm asking which channel he runs that has over 1 million subscribers and why he doesn't list it anywhere. Hey Savannah, I am sorry he doesn't disclose the channels that he runs anonymously. Best, Stormy. Is there a reason for that? Hey Savannah. The first reason is that if we were to reveal his 1 million sub channel, there would be a thousand carbon copies. The second reason is that it would flood the channel with traffic of people not interested in what the channel actually posts and therefore hurt the engagement rate of the channel. A big part of Matt's method is getting people who are actually interested to watch your content, via search traffic, so eventually, the YouTube algorithm hopefully promotes it via the suggested feed on popular channels. Also. Make sure to watch this video in which Matt proves that he actually runs these channels and that the play buttons are real. Best. Stormy. Okay, so then we get the carbon copy response again. He doesn't want people to copy him, even though certainly plenty of people have found his channel and thought, hey, this guy has a million subs, I could probably do this. He must be pretty good to have garnered over a million subscribers doing whatever it is he's doing. So is he scared of a little competition? If you're good at what you do, why are you worried about other people copying you? Now, I think the first 
thought in a lot of people's mind when you hear this. It's confusing because you're like, wait, he doesn't want people to watch his videos? Like what? Don't you get paid more if you have more views? Like more views equals more ad revenue, which equals more money. I think what they're trying to say is if his video gets less likes and less comments, then the algorithm will stop recommending them as much, which I suppose is a valid concern. Understanding the YouTube algorithm is actually a really big part of being a successful YouTuber. This is why so many YouTubers are always like, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. But this algorithmic concern is also assuming that none of those new viewers would engage with his content, which I think is pretty unlikely to me, but hey, it's a valid concern. Anyway, I didn't respond to that last email. At this point, it seemed like it was enough for me to come to my own conclusion, like they were dancing around questions. Until five minutes later, <laughs> I received a second email that said, Hey Savannah, I got an idea. If you are up for it, smile, would you be interested in writing down all the things you would like to know from Matt and I could get him to record a video for you addressing all the questions you may have about his business? I think it would be great to put in your video. Best. Stormy. I'm sorry, what? Mr. YouTube expert cares enough about my teeny tiny little video to take time out of his busy schedule running nine YouTube channels and an online YouTube mastery course to record a video response for little old me. So I sent a list of all of my questions that I was mulling over and at this point I had been researching for like six hours so I had a lot of questions. Three days later I received the video. It's 33 minutes long and fully edited <laughs> which I thought that was really funny. I'm like yo I'm a YouTuber like I can edit this like you didn't have to do that dude just like you can send me the raw footage it's fine <laughs> but anyway let's just start at the beginning hey how's it going Savannah and everybody watching this video first of all I just want to say thanks for having me on the channel and thank you for coming to me first of all and asking if it was okay if you asked me a couple of questions I mean I see so many people publishing things that they think they know about me or about what I'm doing and honestly a lot of it's just speculation and I really appreciate you reaching out to me and asking if it'd actually be okay. I, first of all, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you letting me come on the channel as well so I can address some of these concerns. You're welcome, Matt. I'm actually really glad I ended up reaching out to you guys too. But I will say that receiving this video, despite it being edited before it even got to me, it humanized Matt a little bit. And I think you'll see that in his responses, yeah, like you can kind of relate to him more with him being open and honest in this way. I hadn't seen this side of him before on his YouTube channel while I was scrolling through his videos. Immediately, the one thing I can really relate to is feeling the frustration that can come out of people. I'm so sorry about this hair, by the way. I keep trying to move it out of my face and I don't even know what's going on, I'm sorry. Yeah, the frustration behind people kind of just running off and saying what they want about you and you not being able to back yourself up. You know, spreading speculation as truth is really a frustrating thing, especially, you know, doing the kind of work that we do. No one likes to be in that position and I'm glad that I ended up getting in contact with him enough for him to be able to have that option. Whether or not you believe everything he says, Says, at least he got to say his piece. So the first question that he ended up addressing to me is why he won't list his channels, which clearly for me in my research has been a point of confusion. <laughs> I think one of the first reasons first and foremost is that if I were to release one of my YouTube channels, specifically one of my bigger channels, there would be like a million carbon copies of that channel because everybody who's looking to do this method of doing YouTube without showing their face or anything like that, they're always looking for like the next best niche and they're always looking for that kind of stuff, which I don't blame them, I am myself too. But honestly, when something's working so well and you release it to this kind of community, it would honestly just be like tons of different carbon copies of the exact channel. And the reason that's bad is that there'd be so much competition for that channel, it could actually be detrimental. Now, the way I view YouTube, like competition to a certain degree, I think is actually good because you can actually get into the suggested feed of already popular content and you can get a lot of views doing this. But at the same time, there is a point where it becomes, you know, too much saturation. And I really believe that if I were to give my channels out there, that it would just be like a million carbon copies. I agree with what he says here about competition being good. I'm sure most of you guys know that here on my channel, I focus on multi-level marketing companies. Recently, bigger, more established creators outside of the community have started talking about it as well. And I've heard a lot of people being like upset about it. And when I say people, I mean like other people who are making content for the community as well. 
they're like kind of like gatekeeping the community. And to me, I'm like, when Raw Beauty Christie finally comes out with the video that she's been hinting towards for a long time, yeah, she is 100% going to get more views on her video than any video I've ever made because she's got a large established audience. However, do you know what the YouTube algorithm is going to do? It's going to start suggesting anti-MLM content to the people who watch that video, meaning that my videos may get recommended to people who watch Raw Beauty Christie. It's a good thing, not just for me being a YouTuber and being like, yay, more people get to see my content, but also because the information that we want to get out there is getting out there one way or another. I don't see it as competition. I see it as a new opportunity for growth. On the topic of competition though, I don't really think Matt gave a 100% straight answer here. I did end up asking him specifically if he's afraid of competition and this is what he had to say. Well, I'm not concerned with fair competition, but what I am concerned about is people copying my videos word for word, uploading the same exact titles, basically just creating more competition for myself within those given niches. To me, this sounds like competition is good, but it's better for me if I don't have any, which fair, I mean, slightly contradictory, but fair. Matt had a second reason for not releasing his channels to the public that I had never really heard him talk about much or explain thoroughly until now. And the second reason I don't give out my channels is due to the fact that it would flood those channels with people who aren't actually interested in the videos. And a big part of the method that I teach is that you want to get people who are actually interested in your content to be watching your videos, which obviously sounds self-explanatory. However, as you know, I have this personal brand where I teach people about YouTube and all this kind of stuff. And if I were to reveal any of my channels, these are like independently operating businesses. Tons of people would flood over to those channels. They'd be watching them for only a couple seconds at a time and it would totally diminish the audience retention, the engagement rates on the channel, not to mention that YouTube would think that the huge mass of people checking out these channels, even if it's just small in percentage to the amount of people who are watching the channel, the mass of people coming to there wouldn't actually be interested in the content, so YouTube would recommend it to more people like them who aren't interested in the first place, and it could be bad. And I've noticed this with a lot of my channels. I've had other channels that I run get picked up on different websites around the web, and a lot of times that can actually hurt the channel if the people or the website that it's being shared on, the people reading that website aren't actually interested in the video, it can actually be very detrimental to the video. And I think that would definitely be the case if I were to reveal any of my bigger channels. Is this kid a secret genius? <laughs> or am I just dumb? Because hearing him explain it this way actually makes a ton of sense. Many people who start doing YouTube have views in the forefront of their mind. It's always more views, good, but He's actually right about all of this. The YouTube algorithm doesn't rely on views much at all. It's all about watch time and audience engagement. And if people are only watching him for five seconds and then clicking off, he's absolutely correct. It probably would affect the algorithm negatively. And to assume that people would just show up just to see what he's doing and then be like, huh, let's see, okay, so this is what he's doing that's working so well. 30 seconds, uh, okay, this makes sense. Like, I can do this. Click off. Yeah, if they're not interested enough to actually sit through the whole video, they're interested in his method and not what he's actually talking about enough to give him that watch time. Yeah, like it all makes sense. So far, you're making a pretty good point for yourself, Matt. And I think that this speaks to his knowledge. So I think he explained himself really well here. I wanted to know if Matt had any concerns about establishing credibility to sell his course and he had this to say. I think that the results that I show, the results that my students have gotten really do speak for themselves. and really to prove that I actually do this method too, that I grow YouTube channels, I really wanted it to make it a point that I made my own personal brand channel and I grew that channel. And as you know, I have the Make Money Matt YouTube channel and I grew that channel with only 90 videos on the channel to over 100,000 subscribers. So I do believe that this does demonstrate that the tactics that I teach are working along with all the different student results that I've gotten. Now there's a lot of different YouTube gurus out there who are selling courses on this kind of stuff, trying to teach YouTube, claiming that they have multiple different YouTube channels with a bunch of subscribers on them, but at the same time, they can't show any channel. And I recognize this and I was like, I don't wanna show my other channels, so why not just grow a personal channel from scratch to prove to people that this stuff is working? And honestly, I'd be as skeptical as anybody else out there. So I really wanted to make it a point with my personal brand that I was launching that I really wanted to have a personal YouTube channel that I grew really big to show that these methods are working, not only on faceless channels like I also run, 
but also on my personal brand channel. These are working for all types of channels. I personally think I have been credible and I have given useful information that people could use. And I personally believe that what sets me out from all these other YouTube gurus out there is the fact that I have a really big personal brand channel in which I actually grew that I can show you. I can show you my Make Money Match channel. That's one of the biggest points that can actually prove that I'm actually doing this method because without that, like you said, it would be hard to establish that kind of credibility. So I really made it a point to grow that channel, provide as much value as I possibly can on those videos and help people as much as I possibly can with YouTube. I will say that it seems like we kind of have a different view of what credibility is when it comes to him and what he does. So here's how I see it. Student testimonials are easy to fake, but a YouTube channel with 1 million subscribers is not so easy to fake. So Matt sees his credibility being established by his students and their results, as well as growing his Make Money Matt channel to what it is today. His skeptics just want to be able to see it all for themselves and maybe that's just general human curiosity because shit I mean I want to see what he's doing you know I want to know what channels he runs because I'm genuinely curious so another youtuber that I've been kind of including in this video who is a very vocal skeptic of Matt his name is Kuda the nerd he talks about his testimonials a bit in this video I don't necessarily agree with what he's saying and I'll explain why after I show this clip but I'm gonna put it here just so you understand why people are skeptical first thing that sus about his website is the member testimonials now these guys look like pretty average dudes they look like the type of people that would buy this course but actually these guys are just either paid actors or other gurus after doing a little digging i found the names of literally all of these gurus this is chase namik he's a youtube guru just like matt this guy right here carlos katari he's also a youtube guru abdullah el shazi guess what also a youtube guru john thomsberg he's a paid actor Look at his testimonial, dude. The guy is literally reading off a script Matt sent them. It cannot get more obvious than that. These so-called members are either Matt's friends who he got to record videos pretending they're his students or actors Matt paid to give testimonials. This is like a straight up scam. Like this is going out of the territory of scumbag behavior into a straight up scam. My response to the, they're all YouTube gurus too, is well, yeah. <laughs> if they really took Matt's class, then they were interested in starting a YouTube channel and becoming successful on YouTube. What Kuda the nerd is saying here is a plausible explanation and I 100% understand how he came to this conclusion but honestly I don't think that's the case. It's more likely to me in my mind that these people actually did take Matt's course and then went on to do the content they're making now. In this video that Matt uploaded titled how to make money on YouTube without making videos 160k a year he's seen showing his analytics page but what myself and others have found to be super sketchy about this is that he has the channel icon and channel name hidden. Again, why? Why would someone want to hide such a huge achievement like this? And to me, coming from a YouTuber's perspective, it does seem a little backwards to just willingly show your analytics, but not your channel name. Like if I ever found myself in a situation where I felt like I needed to show my analytics, like I would blur out the numbers, but leave my channel name on there. I don't know. It see, to me, it just seemed a little backwards. But here's the thing, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that this page was doctored in some way, as pointed out by Kuda the Nerd. And I'm a huge Kit Boga fan. If you guys have been watching me for a while, you guys know I absolutely love Kit Boga. One method that the scammers use a lot when he's talking to them is they'll gain access to their computer and then gain access to their bank account on their internet browser and then use the inspect element function that you can find in Google Chrome and Firefox and all that and then literally doctor the page to make it look like they gave them money when they really didn't. For anyone who doesn't know, I mean, you can do this yourself. I mean, you can try it right now when you're watching this video. Go ahead, right click on my subscriber count, click inspect element, and you can put in however many you want. Look, I'll do it here. I'll go to my YouTube page, change my sub count to higher than the entire world's population, but as soon as you click refresh, the page edit's gone. And I played around with this on my own analytics page as well. I'm not gonna show it here because I don't want my analytics out there, but I can confirm that this kind of page doctoring is possible and it kind of is easy to do, especially with someone like me who the only coding experience I have is from the MySpace days. And I think other <laughs> grandmas like me will understand what I'm talking about, you know, putting in your image sources and stuff. 
to make your MySpace page look good. But yeah, even on the graphs that he's mousing over here, like you don't have to be a coding genius to be able to doctor pretty much any internet web page. And if you yourself watching this video, if you have access to your own YouTube analytics page, I would recommend trying it for yourself too. And I will admit that there obviously are more advanced methods to coding and doctoring pages like this, but it's still really easy to do for someone who doesn't have coding experience. Now, according to Kuda the Nerd, Matt stopped making videos showing his analytics because people kept asking him to refresh the page. And of course that would reveal his scam if there were one. Well, it turns out that Matt actually has a video of him refreshing his AdSense page, which this may not be the analytics, but at least refreshing the AdSense page does show that he didn't doctor this particular page in his internet browser as a lot of people were suspecting. He also has a video showing his bank account and proving that he's getting AdSense payments. And I realize that people who do have coding experience can still replicate these things, but personally, I really don't believe that that's what's going on here. It's kind of a stretch. Okay, well, let's talk about Make Money Matt's content. In this video, Matt talks about what he believes to be the number one way to make money on YouTube without making videos. I've made $134,000 from a single YouTube channel without even making videos. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean by that. So guys, here is an example channel called Tech HD. This video was uploaded three months ago. It already has 6.3 million views. Look, a lot of their most popular videos were only uploaded three months ago, two months ago. This method is not only working, it's working really well right now. Starts off with just an intro, it says Tech HD. It shows all these different furniture and tables, and it shows videos that they didn't even make. These are videos they're getting from websites, from other YouTube videos, putting them together into their own video, uploading it to YouTube, and these videos get a ton of views. They even put a link down to the product in the description. For example, this is 6.3 million views that this product and this company would have otherwise not gotten if it was not for this video. They put royalty-free music in the background of the videos, no voiceovers whatsoever. I always do recommend doing a voiceover on top of your videos, but judging by these channels, it's not necessary. And then you can go to the link of any of these different products. For example, if we click this Heatherwick Studio Friction Table link, it brings up the page of that product. There's even a link on this page that says view footage here. And if we click the link, it shows that exact same Vimeo video. All this channel did is find all these different tables, download the videos, and then re-upload them to YouTube. And they're making a lot of money doing this. At first glance, and I will admit that before I talked to Matt, I thought this way too, it looks like he's encouraging people to steal other people's content and then compile pieces of that content and then upload it as your own. Swell Entertainment's video about Matt is literally titled, Just Steal From Creators. She actually took his free webinar. So you'd think that she's credible in what she's saying about the content she consumed. I didn't take the webinar. It's like really long and I'm just like, I can't sit through this. <laughs> I basically just know about the webinar through what Amanda said in her video. After Matt went through and explained all of his success and how he started on YouTube when he was young and how he was making more money than his parents at one point, he talks about how you can be financially successful here on YouTube. He talks about channels like Looper and all of these other compilation channels, some of which do not have audio to them and how they just show clips. They get millions and millions of views and you never have to show your face and sometimes you never even have to record a voiceover. I know there's a lot of different opinions on compilation channels here on YouTube. A lot of them are just simply taking a bunch of other people's content and compiling them, not doing any commentary, not doing any editing, not doing much of anything and not that it's not work to go and try and locate clips for the video you're doing that week. But Matt's not telling you to go and scour the internet for clips that you wanna use for your tech videos. No, Matt is telling you to find a tech channel that you like that does compilation videos, go to their description box and just download whatever videos they use. So you're doing even less of the work. Basically, you're just doing the bare minimum for your channel and then you are paying other people to make content for you and you are reaping the benefits of the AdSense or whatever. But after watching it, it's pretty easy to draw to the conclusion that Matt is essentially telling you that you can make a butt ton of money by just stealing other people's content and then you just reap the benefits off the back of other people. These channels are still making videos. They're just not filming them and recording voiceovers, which I guess would be pretty easy for just about anyone to do as long as you know your way around a simple editing program. However, with everything we just got done talking about, Matt explains it a little bit differently. I do not teach people to copy or steal other people's content. I teach people to model what works, which is a lot different. And I always make sure to tell people that you're replicating proven content 
in your own way. Don't copy it word for word. Always make sure that your content's 100% unique. And I see a lot of people out there as well saying that, oh, I'm just teaching people to re-upload other people's videos, which is not at all what I'm teaching. If you go through any of my different webinars, my YouTube videos, if you go through any of my courses, you'll see that I teach people only to abide by the terms of YouTube and abide by the terms of fair use and make sure you're doing everything legally. Because look, there's a lot of different YouTube gurus out there who are telling people to just straight up re-upload people's videos. Now, the problem in this is that, sure, it might work short term. However, at the same time, you're breaking YouTube's policy, so you're gonna get banned eventually, and you're not gonna build a real long-term business with YouTube. The point of all my courses, my YouTube videos, everything, is to help people build a real long-term business with YouTube and a lot of these different YouTube gurus as well. I hate to keep referencing that, but I don't want to call names on anybody. But honestly, it is really frustrating having to compete with these types of people. A big part of what I'm teaching as well is people to do their own research in regards to SEO. Take a look at proven content that's done well in your niche, but don't replicate it word for word. Make it in your own way. I teach people a lot of times to go on YouTube, find like five minute videos that have done pretty well on YouTube, but remake it. Remake it into a better 10 minute long version with better audience retention, implementing all the tactics that I teach. And oftentimes you can actually go viral by doing this. And I don't want anybody copying any content word for word. I don't want people re-uploading each other's videos or any of that. If you're gonna be doing this, you need to remake it in your own words and you need to remake it in your own way. And just to clear some things up as well, usually when you're running a channel like this, obviously we all know about like doing YouTube and like getting behind a camera like I'm doing right now and like most people run their channels, like Savannah runs her channel. She gets behind a camera, records the videos and stuff like that. Now, what most people don't realize is that there's this whole other side of YouTube of huge channels who never show their face or ever get in front of a camera. Now, oftentimes with all of these channels that never show their face, there's someone behind the channel doing voiceovers for the channel. And that's really what I teach people to do voiceovers on top of different clips, either using other people's clips, but making sure it's fair use and making sure that it's transformative. Or on the other hand, going to places like pixabay.com or like pexels.com, which are just completely free stock websites, downloading stock clips, writing your own script, making sure it's 100% unique, running it through places like copyscape.com to really make sure that it's unique and then to record a voiceover, and then you could like play different stock clips in the background. And there's a lot of huge channels that do this. So you might be asking, well, you teach a lot about people how to make money on YouTube without making videos, right? And the way we do that is by outsourcing the video creation process, basically getting other people to make the videos for you. Like I tell a lot of people, I run nine different YouTube channels and they're like, how in the world do you run nine different YouTube channels? How, I wouldn't even have time for one. And the only way in all honesty that I'm able to do that is by getting other people to make the videos for me. So those people make the videos for those channels. So if you have money to invest, like this is definitely an option to still run a YouTube channel without ever having to show your face or get behind a camera or really even make any videos. And if you're doing this whole route, you're really gonna wanna outsource a few different things. First of all, the script writing, the voiceovers, the video editing, and the thumbnail design. And then the only part you do in that entire process is coming up with video ideas, doing keyword research, and uploading and optimizing the finished videos. So I know that was a kind of long-winded explanation, and we're all gonna have different opinions on this method. And I use Pexels every time I need a little bit of stock footage here or there. Um, I use it for when I'm showing my patrons and I need like a background image, I get all that from Pexels. And I'll probably be using it while I'm editing this video as well. I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that. I think Pexels, and uh, I think he mentioned Pixabay, which is another one that's pretty much the same thing. I think they're a great resource, but it also kind of sounds like he's saying like, oh, you can just go on Fiverr and hire someone to do the voiceover for you. And then you can hire someone to edit it all for you. And then you upload it and you keep all the AdSense money that it makes. Is this a rule breaker? No. I think the argument would be that YouTube is a really amazing platform and it gives anyone the opportunity to make a living or even just a side income being creative and passionate about something and putting it out on the internet. I think that's the most beautiful Beautiful part about YouTube. To know that there are people out there like Matt who really don't seem to have any passion behind what they're making, they're more passionate about the money they're making off of that content, it kind of ruins the magic for me. And despite how sad that makes me feel for the state of YouTube and its communities, I'd be lying if I said I didn't respect that hustle. Let's be honest, we don't know what channels Matt runs, so we can't definitively say what kind of content he's actually making. And 
and if he's actually abiding to what he's teaching in the first place. But if this is truly the method that he's been using to make his videos, who are we to hate on a kid who found a way to do YouTube that makes him a butt ton of money? <laughs> he's making six figures a year, dude, and the only reason I can think of for someone to hate on him at this point is just out of pure spite and jealousy. He found what works for him. He's not breaking any laws or rules. He can continue to do that whether we respect it or not. Maybe his skeptics are just mad because they didn't do it first. Regarding the play buttons, Matt realizes that they're a point of contention and he has a lot to say about them. <laughs> we already discussed that whole his play buttons are fake because it says Matt on them, blah, blah, blah. And he actually does have a video where he goes through the process of how to claim a play button. I'll leave that in the description below if you guys want to watch it. My biggest question and one that I sent to Matt was how he was able to qualify for those play buttons when the YouTube help page itself says the following. Main content must be original. Channels that focus on compilations, mixes, curation, or heavy use of someone else's copyrighted content or characters may be ineligible. You're completely right. Like there's tons of different YouTube channels who get demonetized who aren't able to qualify for things like this gold play button that you get when you hit a million subscribers because they're not actually making their content original. There's tons of different channels that do this method, and I'm sure that we can agree that big channels like Watch Mojo or The Richest, they're not stealing other people's content and they're not just re-uploading people's content. There's a big difference between doing like a compilation like you were stating or doing something along the lines of like Watch Mojo or The Richest. Like these are legitimate channels and they're actually making original content because they're abiding by the terms of fair use. And the way they're able to do that, there's a few different ways you can do this, but one of which is making your videos educational. And obviously if you just do that, it's not alone to make something fair use, but you can make it educational, make it a parody. And that's why I'm able to qualify things like play buttons. And also why I'm able to qualify for things like having monetization on my channels and having a YouTube partner manager. I mean, I've actually been to YouTube, to the YouTube headquarters, meeting my partner manager, got to meet a, a ton of amazing people there. And that's because I'm doing this the real way. There's uh, so many different scams out there that are teaching people to just re-upload content. You cannot do that. You cannot just re-upload other people's videos. And again here, I mean, he's right. If he's really using Pixabay and Pexels to get his stock footage, well, that's not under copyright infringement. Now let's go onto his website and look at his courses. As I mentioned earlier, his course will run you about one thousand dollars. Hachi machi. Here's what Matt says is included in the course. One, choosing a niche, uploading 33 videos and outsourcing the work. Two, specifics on how to choose a niche, including a list of over 100 profitable niches. Three, setting up your YouTube channel for success, like how to use Matt's 33 video rule, his secret to optimizing search engines, and planning your content strategy. Four, uploading videos, including what makes a viral video, where to find free content, how to edit it for free, and thumbnail tips. Five, how to understand YouTube analytics, how to go viral, and when to upload. Six, money, how to make more money than most YouTubers, how to monetize your channel, and Matt's favorite ways to utilize YouTube for the gains. And finally, seven, how to hire people to make all of the content for you, making a video assembly line, and scripts to find the right people for the job. He'll also give you fill in the blank script templates because who even wants to come up with that shit for themselves anyway? And he'll give you access to some case studies about YouTube niches. Where did he get these studies? Did he write them himself? Are, are they actually legit studies? Studies, or is it just a bunch of anecdotal evidence? Who knows? Now let me tell you what problems I have with this program. At first glance, you can kind of tell that Matt's advice doesn't really rely on any creativity or meaningful content creation at all, in my opinion. Like I said earlier, I think that is the best part of YouTube. And listen, following Matt's advice is gonna be a hustle in and of itself. If you don't have heart and soul behind what you're doing and what you're creating, it can really be hard to grow an audience because people can tell when you're genuine. And then you're just gonna be miserable doing it because then it's just gonna feel like a regular job. You know what's that thing that they say? If you love what you're doing, then you'll never work a day in your life or something like that. If you don't love what you're doing, then it just turns into another job, <laughs> another hustle, another grind, I guess. So if people can tell that you're not genuine and you're just in it for a quick buck, how easy is it gonna be for you to grow your YouTube channel? Now, I guess the argument to that is if you're hiring people to do all the work for you who actually are genuine passionate,
passionate. Like if you hire a voiceover actor to do your voiceover, if they're passionate about being a voiceover actor, that will probably come through in their performance, you know? It's just not a sustainable way for the average person to do YouTube. We can't say whether or not his model works long term because he hasn't been doing it long term. Now another thing is, have you seen Matt's YouTube library? <laughs> He's got around 100 videos, all of them averaging between 10 and 20 minutes, some more, some less, and they all touch on the topics that he says he teaches in his course. How to make money on YouTube without actually making videos, how to get monetized fast, the case studies he's mentioned, ideas that will guarantee views, how to find your niche, the best time to upload videos, how to make thumbnails, channel growth strategy, etc. From watching a handful of his videos, he's mentioning a lot of the same things that his website says are also offered in his courses. He also offers a free six video series on his website, which I think is the webinar that Swell Entertainment took and discussed at length in her video. That's also linked down below. And most importantly, Importantly, if you take any of those bullet points from his modules and search them on YouTube, you will find tons of free content. Matt would probably argue that they're not as qualified to teach those topics as he is because they don't have the same kind of results as he does. But again, depending on how you're taking all of this, seeing is believing and none of us have actually been able to tangibly like see <laughs> Matt's results for ourselves. So here are some clips of Matt explaining his courses and speaking on being able to find this information for free all over YouTube. Honestly, a lot of the content is on YouTube for free. Like people can look up um, different things when it comes to how to create a YouTube channel, how to make an AdSense account and all the other stuff that goes into running a YouTube channel. But within my course, I basically teach a blueprint for how to do this. And as well, I do show proprietary things that I do not share anywhere else, such as my secret SEO keyword process in which I teach people how to use certain tools in conjunction with other tools to get a bunch of keywords that would be the best for ranking your YouTube channels. Essentially finding keywords that are low in competition yet high in search volume that you can then base your channel around and I show the exact process because like you said there's a lot of different how-to videos on YouTube showing how to come up with a name for your YouTube channel, how to grow your YouTube channel, how to get subscribers. I'm sure everybody's seen those types of videos but what those videos don't do is give you like a step-by-step -step blueprint of every single thing you need to do along the way and that's what I believe that my courses show and I'm continually improving my courses as well you know. I take people's suggestions for the course into account all the time and also what they're getting when they do buy into my main program to mastery and monetization is they're getting access to me. They're not just paying for a course which I give to them and then forget about them. That's what so many different course creators do. Really the main part of the course that they're getting when they buy the course is that they're getting access to me in the form of a private Facebook group. So we have a completely private Facebook group that they can join once they join the course and I'm in there every single day for hours a day answering every single question in the group and I always make it a point to do this I always answer every single question that they have because I know how much that sucks when you buy into someone's course and then they don't answer your question. If you want to know my opinion on Matt's course based on what I know and the price that he's selling it for, I believe, and this is not a knock on Matt, but I believe that you don't have to be paying a thousand dollars for this. Can people possibly find really helpful information in his course? Probably. Understanding search engine optimization and how to work the YouTube algorithm, like I said earlier, that's kind of the hard stuff to learn for yourself. But even as Matt admitted, yeah, there's videos about all that stuff on YouTube. What I believe that Matt is selling here more than anything else is himself. And what I mean by that is he's putting value on his personal time spent interacting with his students, which you know what? You know what? Good for him. Time is money. And they say that if you're actually good at something, you should never do it for free. Matt clearly recognizes his time is valuable. And I think that's something that we can all learn in certain aspects in our lives. He is right when he says, yeah, you can watch this video or that video, but you can't really get a quick and personalized response from the people who made those videos most of the time anyway. So assuming that he's actually teaching valuable information that someone may find useful, being able to get Matt's advice might actually be worth the thousand dollars to you. I'm a cheapskate at heart. So to me, I personally wouldn't pay for it. I'd rather research by watching hours and hours and hours of free content that other people are offering on YouTube, but maybe that's just me. But I do need to point out the disclaimer that is posted at the bottom of his website. It doesn't really 
really earn any faith in the courses with me. Earnings and income representations made by Matt Parr, mattparr.com, and their advertisers slash sponsors are aspirational statements only for your earning potential. These results are not typical and results will vary. The results on this page are our results and from years of testing. We can in no way guarantee you will get similar results. Please understand my results are not typical. I'm not implying you'll duplicate them or do anything for that matter. I have the benefit of practicing YouTube since 2014 and have an established following as a result. The average person who buys any how-to information gets little to no results. I'm using these references for example purposes only. Your results will vary and depend on many factors. I know that was kind of long, but the point that I'm most focused on is the part that says the average person who buys any how-to information gets little to no results. So is he admitting here that his $1,000 course won't even work? And I know we discussed Jake Paul a little bit before, but I mean, it just brings me back to this. By now, I think we've all kind of heard of Jake Paul's financial freedom movement. And then that Team 100 thing that he had, I think before the financial freedom movement. These courses are essentially Jake Paul teaching you how to be successful on YouTube. But he came under fire because he made it look like he was charging $7 when really you get in there and it was $50 on top of that. So Jake Paul, being a successful YouTuber is offering his expertise for $57. Compared to $1,000, that seems like a steal. Matt's a smart kid, and he already knows the ins and outs of Jake Paul's courses. So in the following clip that I'm going to insert here, he discusses how he justifies the cost of his course, how him and Jake Paul are basically nothing alike at all. And honestly, this is a lot of stuff I didn't know about Jake Paul's courses. And then he justifies the disclaimer on his website. The average person who does buy how to in information in the form of an ebook or a course they don't get hardly any results and that's part of the reason I do charge a thousand dollars for my tube mastery and monetization program which again isn't just a course but it's an actual community that I'm in every single day answering every question in that community first of all I want to cover that my main course that you do get when you join my program tube mastery and monetization has over 70 plus videos in the course now this is my premium program, like you said, it's a thousand dollars and the price may be even going more up in the future due to the demand that we're getting on this program and the amount of time that I have to spend at answering people's questions. But also when it does come to charging $9.97 for my main program, it does take a lot of my time, like I was saying, to answer those questions in the Facebook group. And another reason that we do charge $9.97 for the program is due to the fact that people take it way more seriously when they join a program of that price. Like I've seen this time and time again, even with myself, like I've bought little $7 courses out there. I buy courses all the time, by the way, like in the past year, I've spent over $40,000 of my own money on different people's courses. But I notice it within myself when I buy a $9 course, it could be the best information in the world but I'm not necessarily going to take as much uh, action on that knowledge as opposed to spending $30,000 on a mastermind. And also real quick, I do wanna address that our business does have overhead. You know, I am paying people to help with this. We have support teams. I pay my girlfriend, payment processors, editors, accountants, lawyers. There's all these different things, tons of different softwares that we have to spend on, on membership sites. We just recently upgraded our video hosting, which costed an extra $6,000 a year. And I'm not saying this for anybody to feel bad about us. We're doing really fine. And we're honestly really grateful to be in this position that we did have to upgrade our hosting because that's a good thing and it is a sign of growth. And I do wanna add that we do have expenses as well. And like I said, I'm spending my personal time every single day for hours a day answering questions in our Facebook community. Now to address the question about Jake Paul's course where he charges only like $57 to join it, from what I heard about that whole thing was I heard that he charged a very low amount to get in the course and then what he had was called more expensive recurring payments which means that it might have been $50 or $7 or whatever to join the course but then after that the price goes up to like $97 a month and don't quote me on that I don't know exactly how much it was but what I do know is that that was happening so like kids were buying into that program and then they were getting charged more on a monthly recurring basis. And honestly, in my eyes, I don't think that's the best business practice that you can do. I mean, you want to be upfront with people. And another reason I think he charged so low as well is because most of his audience are kids. Most of the people that buy into any of my programs are adults. So I want to make that clear as well. Also for that price point, you're not going to be getting any access to Jake Paul himself. Obviously, he's not going to be in a Facebook group answering questions. And I personally bought into Jake Paul's course and literally like more than half the course was 
literally just upsells to other people's programs in which he would make an affiliate commission on. So he's recommending all these different tools and stuff to use, which I get it. Obviously there's different tools that you can use and everything. And there's different training programs that he can recommend, but it was like a lot of different training programs that he was recommending that obviously either they paid to be placed on that or he's upselling it and he's getting an affiliate commission on every single sale that he gets. And this is also commonly referred to as a funnel where you get someone in for a low price and then you sell a bunch of different higher priced offers in which he gets a commission on every single sale that he gets, which again, probably not the best business practice because he's offering people to teach all of his quote unquote secrets about YouTube and they buy in, then they have to buy a more expensive and a more expensive course. I do think that he makes a good point when he says that people are more likely to take action on something they've invested on. I think that's just the way money really works in our lives. So of course I understand that argument, but it's also important to know that just because you take action doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get results from those actions. And we see that a lot in MLMs, which is what I spend most of my time talking about on this channel. So the question is here, are you willing to spend $1,000 dollars on a course that has a disclaimer that says you probably won't get any results. And is what Matt presented here enough credibility established for you? Is his approach to YouTube the most fulfilling way to go for you? Like, would you rather make a ton of money but not really feel like you're gaining any pride for the work you're doing? Or would you rather try your hand at the kind of traditional approach where you present yourself and you do or talk about things that you're passionate about, despite the fact that it'll likely take you a lot more time to build up an audience and a channel that way, what is the most important thing to you? And I think those are the questions that you need to be asking yourself when you're considering taking not just Matt's course, but any YouTube expert course like this. My experience here has been interesting. <laughs> I went from being like, oh, this kid is 100% a scammer to reaching out to Matt and hearing him out for myself. And now here's where I fall. I do not believe that Matt is scamming anybody. He's clearly passionate about what he does. He's well-spoken, he's enthusiastic, and he's in a respectable place in his young life. However, I don't personally think that his course would be worth $1,000 to me. Like even if it were $500, I'd probably still pass on it. Let's face it, that's a big chunk of money for the average person to drop. Most of us can't afford to drop that kind of money on a YouTube course, especially when there's a lot of free resources out there already. And then you just kind of pick things up along the way. And like I said, that's obviously a more time consuming, longer approach to things. To me, YouTube is a learning experience. I learn new things on YouTube every single day. And while the way that I'm, and many of us out here are doing it, may not be the fastest way to grow a successful YouTube channel, but it's certainly more realistic and doable to me anyway. And with doing YouTube the way I've been doing it, like, like I said, I learn new things every day and it's not just about the algorithm and SEOs and stuff like that, but I learn a lot about myself as like a human being. <laughs> it's a journey for me. And I would hope that a lot of other people feel the same way on YouTube. I feel like what I do here is quite quite fulfilling. And I don't know if someone who does YouTube in the way Matt says to do it is fulfilling in any other way besides I have money now. <laughs> and to me, like money's not everything. Anyway, what are your thoughts? After all of this, after watching all of this, do you trust Matt enough to justify what he's doing? Do you still think he's scamming people? Or did you have your mind changed about him? Please let me know in the comments. And if you'd like this video, give it a like and a share. I worked pretty damn hard on this video and I know it's not, you know, necessarily about MLMs, but if you guys liked it too, please let me know because I would love to keep doing videos like this that aren't just, you know, MLM centered. It's, I feel fulfilled in <laughs> what I've done here. So if you guys liked it too, please let me know. Thanks again to our sponsor, NordVPN. Be sure to support them if you're in the market for a VPN use my link nordvpn.com slash Savannah Marie and use the promo code at checkout Savannah Marie your support there helps me continue to be able to get sponsorships in the future which is obviously a pretty big deal to me so thank you and one last final thank you here goes to my patrons the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Amanda McMahon Anxiety for Days Corey Allison Irene Nordeed Michelle Matthews Kurt Ferguson Yesenia Rivera Katrina Rosemarick Elizabeth 
Elizabeth Wyatt, Karina Winman, Maria Burchett, Molly Larson, Molly Wasilewski, Rach J, Real Fly Realize, Bobby Boris Geller, Clark Grace, Daniel Urena, Desiree Lopez, E. Higgins, Evan Adler, Eve Blondo, Hey Felicia93, JP Eugenio Schaefer, Justin Kelsey, Kaylin Caulfield, Kelly Creffield, Kim Cartwright, Laura Lynn Martin, Maddie Darley, Nikki Amber, Rachel McHenry, Savannah Krakowskis, Tuesday the 13th, Vanda's Closet, and Kat Loves Things and Stuff, and to the rest of you. I know this video was a little longer than usual, so if you're still here, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being you. Keep making waves, babes. I will smell you guys later. Mommy Tsunami out.